What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist coming back at it with another installment of Grim Dark Battles. If you don't know what this is, I will tell you right here, right now. So we pit two combatants from the Warhammer 40k universe and 30k universe up against each other in a battle of who would win between one and the other. This is strictly going by the lore, but you guys do have a chance to comment and answer who you think would win in our polls that are posted both on Facebook and on YouTube. So this one pits the almighty Tyranids against the ferocious Space Wolves. So on the Tyranid side, we have none other than the mighty Swarm Lord. And on the Space Wolf side, we've got Harold Deathwolf. So all in all, these two combatants are pretty ferocious. Um, I mean, one's a freaking Wolfy McWolf Wolf, and the other one's a Buggy McBuggerston. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. But anyway, guys, uh, let's dive into their lore, dissect their strengths, their weaknesses, and their weapons and war gear, and we'll see who comes out on top on this grim, dark battle. So let's begin with the Swarm Lord. So the Swarm Lord is an ancient being that has literally fought countless battles throughout the galaxy. He is an apex predator that the hive mind unleashes when a tough opponent arises. He is literally the most intelligent, experienced, and bloodthirsty of all the Tyranids. It is literally like, think of all the Tyranids combined into one super Tyranid. It's a strong warrior, and it has really, really powerful psychic abilities as well. But the true strength lies in his close combat capability. So the Hive Mind can also resurrect, or to better put, recreate the Swarm Lord if it does fall in battle. However, when it comes back, it retains all its memories, personality, and grudges. So he is a very formidable foe. So now let's talk about some of his feats. So the Swarm Lord kicked the Chapter Master of the Ultramarines' ass all over the place. Marnius Augustus Kalgar lost like three of his limbs. He lost an eye. His guts were literally practically spilling out. And when I say Kalgar lost, I mean to say this times a hundred. He should have been dead. Like, there's no way this man could have survived. Uh, but anyway, I mean, at the end of the day, plot armor can save anybody. But yeah, the Swarm Lord literally kicked this dude's butt. On another occasion, the Swarm Lord also led the Tyranids against the Eldar. Here, the Swarm Lord used tactics to best the Avatar of Cain. So instead of fighting this Avatar one on one, he literally just ordered 12 Carnifexes to basically run a stampede on this dude. Yeah, so this goes to show you that tactics and close combat effectiveness is this dude's forte. However, in a battle of the blades, the Swarm Lord lost in combat to Commander Farsight. How does this make any sense? It does not, guys. I literally have no clue how the freaking Swarm Lord could lose to Farsight. Um, I mean, Farsight was tired and he was weary after fighting all these Tyranids. Uh, but, I mean, I, I don't know, plot armor, I guess you could call it that. And then he also lost again when he fought a tired uh, Commander Dante when the Tyranids invaded Bao. But again, this was more plot armor since the Blood Angels uh, should have died when basically they were invaded. Because the whole chapter of the Blood Angels, including a whole other slew of successor chapters, came to, fought, to fight against the Tyranids, and they were losing drastically. But thanks to Gilliman and his crusade and whatnot, they were saved. But again, uh, I guess you lose some, you win some, especially when you're Zeno. So up against the Imperium, you're, you're bound to get screwed some way or another. So with that plot armor shenanigans being put aside, let's talk about this dude's weapons and war gear. So he dons four Bone Sabers, and they're pretty much its only weapon. Uh, and that's pretty much the only <laughs> weapon he needs anyway. Uh, these Bone Sabers are way, way more powerful than any ordinary Bone Sabers that a Tyranid may have. He has like some kind of growth on each blade that basically produces a very powerful disrupted field that renders any energy field ineffective. Uh, rumor has it that these little growth thingies come from another galaxy. Uh, insert old ones theory here. <laughs> but anyway, these weapons literally slice and dice clean through the thickest of armor, and he can swing these blades so fast that bullets cannot penetrate through. So yeah, this dude is quick. 
Uh, like I said before, guys, the Swarm Lord can use some Tyranid psychic powers, such as the Horror, Psychic Scream, Onslaught, etc. So like a, like, like a beast, this dude is here for the kill. Speaking of beasts, it's time we talk about Harold Deathwolf. So the Wolf Lord of Leaf Snowfang's Great Company has been Harold for the past 100 years. He is a very strong-willed leader who has a great affinity towards befriending the massive Space Wolves of Fenris. His Thunderwolf mount Icetooth has aided Death Wolf throughout his many tough battles. And now let's talk about his feats. And I guess you can say that one of his feats is that wherever he goes, there's usually a pack of Fenrisian wolves close behind. With these feral creatures, he even pushed back a orc horde. Now that is crazy. Uh, throughout his years, he's fought against the traitorous Thousand Sons on many occasions, and he's adapted at fighting against warp users. Surprisingly though, Death Wolf almost lost a battle against Canis Wolfborn before he became a space marine. So think about this. A feral human almost won against a highly trained, gene seed enhanced super soldier. Now how does that, how does that even make sense? Does that mean that Canis is super strong or does that mean that Harold is super weak? I'll leave you guys to decide that. But uh, yeah, I mean, this guy, he doesn't have that many feats, so I'll leave it at that. So let's continue on with his weapons and war gear. Now his main weapon is Glacius, his Frost Axe. And with it, many a Frost Troll has been slain, so you could say that it is slick with troll blood. He's also got frag and crack grenades, a bolt pistol, and a storm shield as well for added protection. However, his coolest piece of war gear, get it, coolest? Okay, never mind. <clears throat> his coolest piece of war gear is his mantle of the Ice Troll King. So this thing is so awesome that it protects him against any type of fire-based attacks. And of course, his last piece of war gear is man's best friend. Or in this case, Space Wolf's best friend, his Thunder Wolf, Ace Tooth. So Ice Tooth is a wolf that is so badass, he got his nickname by taking on a rogue wolf lord. And he severely wounded him. <laughs> uh, so much so that this gave Harrow the opportunity to land the killing blow. And as a trophy, the traitor's frog's ass was cut into a tooth and implanted into uh, Thunder Wolf, thus gaining the name Ice Tooth. Now I think we can all agree here that Ice Tooth is the real MVP. Move aside, Harold Deathwolf. <laughs> Ice Tooth is the main man here. Uh, so yeah, I mean that pretty much concludes uh, the all the feats, the lore behind Harold Deathwolf. And now that we've talked about the Swarm Lord, we are ready to dive into this grim dark battle. So place your bets, guys, and let's find out who will win in this ferocious battle. Riding upon Ice Tooth, Harold Deathwolf enters the Colosseum. Behind him, a pack of four Fenrisian wolves accompany him. The first stands on end as the wolves growl at the towering behemoth before them. The Swarm Lord unleashes a vicious roar as a wave of horror envelops the stadium. The wolves back away, and Harold feels the psychic might of the Tyranid clawing at his psyche, but he has to lead his pack. Ice Tooth and Harold charge forth as he unleashes bolt around after bolt around at the Tyranid, but to no effect. The wolf pack surrounds the Swarm Lord, ready to pounce, and with a mighty growl, they attack all at once. And all at once, the Swarm Lord impales the four wolves. Four bloody bone sabers, four dead wolves. Rage consumes Harold as he lets his inner feral instincts take over. Glacius clashes with the Bone Sabers, but only for an instant, for in that blink of an eye, three slashes tear apart Ice Tooth. But before the carcass even falls on the floor, another slash of attacks strike Harold. His reflexes help him dodge three of the four blows. However, the fourth blow decapitates the Space Wolf. And with a thud, Ice Tooth lands to the floor, barely breathing. He glances over to see his tamer, Harold, decapitated. But before he could stand, four more slashes kill the wolf. The battle goes to the Swarm Lord. And with that very sad 
touching conclusion to this grim dark battle. I am now depressed. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, the victor was the Swarm Lord. Uh, no surprise here, at least for me. The Swarm Lord is literally the pinnacle of the Tyranid strength. Nothing that the hive mind has created has ever been more powerful than the Swarm Lord. He has been fighting throughout the inception of the Tyranid race, at least that's what it seems to be. He's very he's very great at fighting, you know, in combat. He's got the powers of the hive mind, you know, psychic powers. And on top of that, he gains knowledge from every battle that he's ever been in. And then he can re resurrect essentially. So with all this stuff heavily in his favor, Harrow Deathwolf is outclassed in every which way. Um, there is no scenario that I could see Harrow Deathwolf coming out on top, even with a pack of hounds behind him. He's just a plain old uh, space wolf lord. Um, I mean, Calgar, a freaking chapter master, lost to this guy. Dante almost lost to this guy. And um, besides plot armor, literally the Swarm Lord is the apex predator. Um, it's very hard to find someone, or something for that matter, strong enough to take on the Swarm Lord one on one and legit beat him without having um, any OPness to his name. So, in that regard, um, it was a very shocking result for the polls. So, you guys voted 55% for Harold Deathwolf which again shocking but at the same time not so much because in the first couple of episodes of grim dark battles you guys would always vote for the imperium to win regardless of what what they were going up against but yeah i mean usually these polls are very one-sided the imperium always has the upper hand uh, so like i said hero death wolf had 55 percent while the swarm lord only had 45 percent so it was pretty close but still i gotta give it to the swarm lord if you guys have your own opinions as to how Harold can win, please, please let me know down below in the uh, in the comments, because uh, he's got Glacius, he's got a bolt pistol, frag grenades, and then his mantle of the Troll King literally does him no good here, because uh, it's only good against uh, fire-based attacks, and obviously Tyranids don't do any of that. So with uh, utmost speed, really great tactician, tactical mind, I gotta give it to the Swarm Lord. So with that being said, guys, please let me know down below what you guys thought about this grim dark battle. Um, please don't don't make me put any more uh, space wolves getting decapitated or impaled. I love space wolves as much as you do, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, sit tight, guys, because the next grim dark battle is a battle of the gods. We have a shard of the Nightbringer going up against an avatar of Inead, the god of the Eldar Pantheon. So place your bets, guys. There is a poll on our Facebook page as well on the YouTube channel. So pull away. Uh, let, let us know what you guys think. And stay tuned because this epic battle will be showcased next week. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Oh, <laughs>